Colin Turkington, four-time British Touring Car Championship winner. Watch this, mate. Oh, that feels so good. Thank you, Team BMW. Those who work hardest win. We won. Get in there! Get in! For the fourth time in his career, the British Touring Car Champion is Colin Turkington. Yes! Thank you so much. Thank you. Colin, well done. Yes! Colin, what a year. But, mate, those three weekends, Knock Hill, Silverstone, Brands Hatch, got turned around a few times, didn't you? Yeah, Knock Hill. I think it was race two, I was in the gravel. Silverstone race one, I was um, on my way to the pit wall backwards. And uh, you feel like you're taking so many uppercuts and you just gotta keep you know, coming back. And you get to Brands Hatch, but the, the week leading up to it, how do you prepare? You know, What are you thinking? You got good points lead. People want your title, don't they? But what do you think? How do you prepare? It's just all about detailed preparation. It's, it's like, preparing for, for an exam because once you actually get to the weekend you have no time to think about anything or prepare it's too late so you got to have it done uh, but before you get there so you know, f you know for me it's just about spending some time in, in the simulator watching back last year's footage looking at my notes from from last year just keeping the mind you know busy yeah you don't want too much idle time because then you start to overthink it once I know I've done the preparation then I'm calm it's like going into an exam where you've done your revision. <laughs> you know, you're, you you feel uh, you don't feel the pressure the same. Fast forward, Saturday afternoon, qualifying. You made the most bizarre change I've ever seen. Five minutes in on a red flag in qualifying, was it a spring change? A massive change. What were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I just wasn't feeling it. So. Um, I knew we needed to do something, so uh, let's change the front spring. And I've never done that all season. <laughs> In qualifying, it's normally a bit of tire pressures or maybe a click on a roll bar, but it was like, right, we need to do this because that one change I knew could be the difference for me qualifying in pole or qualifying 15th. Sunday morning, on the pole. It's good times, isn't it? What were you thinking? It was um, actually a difficult place to be because of the rain we had on, on Saturday, qualifying day. Pole position is, uh, is not the best place to start because it was, uh, you know, the water runs down to the inside of the track, so pole was still damp. P2 was, was dry. So it was actually Ash Sutton who was uh, alongside you, big player as well, so you knew you had to get away decently. Yeah, I knew Ash would be, would be fast out of the blocks, being rear wheel drive, um, but obviously, being in pole, you like to try and uh, get the whole shot, <laughs> get, get, get to turn one in the lead. But Ian Ash was slightly out of the picture because he wasn't in the championship battle. So, you know, even if he, if he led at the end of the first lap, it's not a problem. Great battle with Ash Sutton. Let's have a little watch. Yeah. You can see from my body language in the car, I, I knew I'd got more pace than Ash. It's all about managing risk. You know, I have to be firm, but obviously not put myself in a compromising position. And also you need trust. You know, Ash is, Ash is, a, is a champion. He's yeah. a previous champion. So you know you can, you can race hard with, uh, with, with guys like that and, and hopefully they're not going to turn you around. The rain came. Um, rear wheel drive's not brilliant in the wet, as we know. People come in and made tyre changes. What was your call on this? We see Hondas coming in. Yeah, coming into the pits for me was you know, probably not an option at that stage because because you're leading the race. Nobody wants to, to pit when you're leading the race. It's a it's a big big gamble to take. So obviously I didn't know half of the grid had come back into the pits for, for wet tires. So Did you not look behind you and think, where's everyone gone? <laughs> as soon as I came out of Clearways when when the track had went green, so the safety car had peeled back into the pits. And this ah. exact moment, once I touched the throttle That looks slow. It was, it was very slow. Well, <laughs> as soon as I touched the throttle, the car just felt so nervous. Oh, no. And I couldn't get back to full throttle. You know, the, the rear axle was just on a knife edge straight away. So I knew, okay, this, this next lap, I just got to keep the car on the track. I, I'm, I'm the guinea pig. I'm the first guy on the track in, in select. So I'm really, my senses are so alive. I'm just trying to feel the grip. All the guys behind me, Everything they do, they're judging it off of what I'm doing because they see when my brake lights come on and then, okay, they adjust to that. 
but obviously I don't have that luxury. There's nobody in front of me, so I'm, you're, you're, you're processing so many things. Um, and then Rory comes past. It's quite a good thing for me because now I, I can base what I do off him. So do you let him go? Do you let him go and just try and slot in behind? But if you do that, then you, you put yourself in the, in the wrong mentality. You know, you want to be aggressive. You want to be going forward. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's re really, really, really difficult uh, place to be. Now I know there's a Honda behind me. I, I don't know if it's Matt Neal or, or Dan Camish. Uh, uh, you know, quite quite soon I figure out that it's that, that it's Dan. But again, I don't. I, I didn't know that he had been in, in in the pits at this stage. But now I'm starting to slip down the order. Mm. You think, okay, Dan passed me a couple of laps ago, and he's moving forward. I'm hemorrhaging a lot of positions here. I was basing what I was doing against the other rear wheel drive cars. So I think I was still ahead of Ash. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see Andy, so I knew I was still doing a good job. I remember- Not you're crying here. No, oh, that's a sweat, <laughs> wiping <laughs> sweat away. <laughs> it's, um, you know, you, that's when you're working the, the hardest, those conditions, you, you try and not make a mistake. But I, rem I remember feeling really proud of what I'd done there. You know, I'd qualified in pole. I, I'd got a point for, for leading the race. So I was thinking, no, oh, these are all good good points I've got in, in, in the bag. On to round 29, mate. This is probably the best start I've seen you make all year. <laughs> what, what was going on in that first one? That was a rubbish start. This one was amazing. Yeah, ever. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a really good start for me in the wet and so much better than I expected. You know, it's Too um, good. <laughs> you know, I, I was going around the outside of Dan Camish and I was thinking, don't 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 do that, don't do it. But but I was still I was still going, still going. So uh, you know it's um, a fantastic start, but I'd put myself into the most dangerous, potentially compromising position in, in a Honda sandwich, you know, between between Dan and Matt. Graham Hill Bend is not the place where you usually see an overtake, is it? It's, it's not an obvious overtaking. Uh, you know, it really narrows in on, on the entry, but I, I knew Matt was there, so I was... I, I showed my intent on the way out of Druid, so I, I kept the car in the middle of the road just to indicate to him that there's going to be no gap on the inside. You know, I showed my intention that, okay, I'm, I'm closing the door, but I'm going to try and maximise the grip through the corner. And the next thing I knew, I felt this, I just felt this touch on the rear. Uh, th this is... This is on board with you at the th start. This is a replay of the start. So, um, yeah, I get a great launch and then I'm like, my gosh, I've got a really good launch, so I'm going to have to go outside, Matt. Uh, should I do, Dan? I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and ride it around the outside for as long as I can. At this moment, I, I back off, okay? I'm tricky. I want to stay on the, on the black stuff and... Uh, he must have wondered where you come from. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, um, you know, I was... Um, yeah, this is the moment where, okay, I'm going to show Matt that um, I'm going to keep the car in the middle of the road. I'm not following Dan. I'm going to stay in the middle of the road. Go, bang, okay, I'm round. And the first bit of contact I felt and I thought, okay, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, a bit of opposite lock, I'm gonna correct this, but it just kept going. The car just kept rotating, and, you know, that was uh, such a surprise um, that, that the car kept going, because there is a critical moment where you catch it and you continue, yeah. but that moment, <laughs> that moment <laughs> was back there. You see Matt put the nose on the inside. That was, that was my gripe with the whole situation, was that, he had two wheels off, 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 off the black stuff, so he was, um, you know, using a bit of grass to pass me. So, you know, once I felt the car continue to rotate, I knew we were in trouble. I hadn't the pace to get from the back of the grid onto the podium in these conditions in the wet. Does it now shift focus to Andrew Jordan winning the title for BMW and his sponsor, Pair Tech, at the time? What what was happening? You wouldn't have known any anything about this, but. Knowing what you know now, do you think there was a, a change in focus? Yeah, yeah, I, I think there was certainly within within some elements. Uh, obviously, probably not until the race is over because at this stage we don't know we don't know the outcome. But um, as we stand, both Dan and Andrew are in the box seat now. This is life or death. This this is what it feels to me. It's absolutely everything's on the line it's everything you work for you, you fight for your reputation your your legacy everything feels like it's on the line so huge shift in in the championship battle huge oh. shift 
on that onboard footage, mate, you look pretty, not given up, but you look dejected. I mean, you tell me how it is. I could tell by your eyes. Yeah, I was completely distraught. It's, it's the moment in any championship. You know, I've had it before when I come close to winning in 2017 and 2016. It's, you're fighting for the championship and then there's a moment when it's over where you can't win any longer and you're you just, okay, that's it. And, and, and you're gutted. And I had that feeling. Are you consoled, supported, or just pushed even more by some kind of positive person? Say Louise, your wife, the team, Dick, Mike, your engineer, your number one. What's the sketch? Yeah, you, you go through it all. Uh, you know, the, it's, it almost feels like you do the walk of shame from, from out of the car, from the garage into the truck. There's so many people about on, on that race weekend. You, you got team people, you got the wider BMW network, you got friends, family, supporters, fans. So I just get in there, take my wetsuit off, dry myself off, and just almost stand in disbelief. It's just like, what happened? I'm not sure what happened. Can't quite believe what happened. Oh, what do we do now? You know, this is, that was round 29. You know, I've grafted from round one. You know, I, th that kind of happened. I, I come in with a 17 point lead. You know, I've won five races this year. We went into the technical debrief. Obviously the mood was very low in my corner. Um, the mood was very rosy in, in AJ's corner. You know, he was now like, Okay, this, this, I'm on, it's on for me. Um, I wanted to just bury my head. I just wanted to sit in a, in a, in a dark room by myself. I, want, I didn't want to see anybody. I didn't want to, I didn't want to listen to music. I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to look at social media. I just wanted to sit in a room by myself, just with my head sort of down and just try and just, just be by myself. I didn't want any noise. The only people I really felt big belief still from were Dan, my engineer, and and Louise, my wife, because we went back in to talk about strategy for for race three. At that stage, you talk talk around the room, and um, yeah, it's almost asking you if you're prepared to help the other guy in a roundabout way. So it's like team management is asking drivers, are they w willing to support another driver who has, who has the best chance of winning, which, which, is, which is AJ? I was sort of considering the answer to that. And then out of nowhere, it was like, Dan, my engineer, was like, what do you mean? We're in this champion. We're in this. You know, Colin is is not out of this, and I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. And he was like, Dan was fully believing that I'm going to win this, and I think everybody else in the room was like, you lost your marbles. <laughs> and at that moment, I was like, this guy really believes I can still do this. I left that room thinking. All right, this, this isn't over. And, and that was the moment that, for me, that the mentality shifted. That was the moment where all those negative thoughts had, had been flushed out. I had nothing to lose all season. I had lots to lose. Um, I, I could have, you know, thrown the championship away by myself at any moment, but I was like, okay, my back's to the wall. Of, let's, let's just go out there and enjoy it and, and go for it. A bit far back, wasn't it? Could you see the lights? No, I was a long way back. You know, the Brands Hatch pit straight is not straight. There's, there's quite a curve on it. So, you know, I was almost at the pit entry and um, seeing the lights was going to be a problem. You see my mechanic put in a bit of tape on the inside of the windscreen and that's because of the low sun. Whenever we come out of Graham Hill Bend towards Surtees, the, the sun's so low in the sky, it, it blinds you. So, so you literally can't see. I was just listening for, for Dan, my engineer's uh, call to go, and I was just going to drop the clutch, and I was going to make the best start of the season. 
the first third of the race really did go to plan for me. I, I'd, I'd passed three cars before I'd got to the first corner. I'd passed 10 cars by the end of the first lap. So already I was on the cusp of, of the points. At the end of lap one, I could see the back of that Honda and I was like, <laughs> I'm coming for you. I am coming for you. <laughs> so uh, obviously, I'm in. I'm in the pack now. I'm in with a lot of quick cars. So I'm behind Tom Ingram. Matt Neil's behind me. So your rate of progress through the race slows down. You, you know you can't just pass a car a lap. So I, I knew from the early part of the race that ugh, the car felt a little bit lazy for my liking, a little bit sloppy. But I had that thought. But straight away, I, I ruled it out. I was like, it doesn't actually matter how the car feels in this race. You just got to drive it above and beyond. So I was going to wring the neck out of that car. I was just going to drive it as hard as I could and uh, just keep focused on going forward. You can see there, Dan Kamish, his brakes are glowing. Were you told at any stage that he looks like he's struggling with his brakes or is it just, it's a touring car. He's probably left foot braking, working the car hard. I had no idea he was in trouble. I think he probably knew he was in trouble from, from the early laps. The laps are ticking down, but it's, the race is still heading in the right direction for me. From where I've come from, I can see the race leader as well, so it's, it, it, it's game on. It was a dogfight, wasn't it? It was a real dogfight. As soon as I got behind Dan... He looks like he's driving differently now. He, I knew he was driving in the mirrors. He had never been in the championship shootout before like this. So he was on, he was on rocky ground. And um, as soon as I got behind him, I felt the momentum of the race shift. And I started just to give him a few little nudges, just to say, just to wave in his mirror and say, look, look who it is, I'm here. And I'm gonna give you a right hard time here. I'm not gonna do anything dirty or nasty, but I'm gonna make your life hard. Watching Dan Kamish's car, you're behind it. I just seen him three or four brake light flashes. That to me says, I'm pumping the pedal. I've got a long pedal. Yeah. And if I see that, and I'm sure you've seen that, you know now it's game on. Well, I didn't pick up on that in the race um, because I had no, it wasn't in my consciousness that he would have an issue with the brakes. So yeah, you see people's brake lights flick on and off, but he could have just been pumping up the pedal. So I wasn't tuned in enough to know that he had an issue. You saw the vision I had there, it was so obscured. I was really struggling to, to see out through the window. Uh, but again, I knew I couldn't flick the wipers on because once I flick the wipers, it's just a smear because we have no, we have no, we have no water bottle in the car. It's not like driving down the motorway where you, where you, where you flick the sprayers and it cleans your window. Dan goes to pass um, Ollie and now I get the switch back. Now I get an overlap and it's like, okay, I'm up the inside. That's close stuff, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But my opening come from him feeling the pressure to attack. <laughs> and again, that was, um, that was just a slight shoulder charge for me to say. That was Shades of Giovinardi <laughs> and you yeah. in 2009 oh, for the title. It's, it's a carbon copy. It's, it's a real. carbon copy. What's this? Going into Druids, I actually get into the back of him. Here. He goes wide, and w when I saw Ollie go wide, I was like, come back, I don't need you that wide, because he had almost, he had braked earlier than I thought, and I had went into the back of him, and in BTCC, now th there's no push to pass, so if I had a continued on and passed him, I then would have to let him repass me. So as soon as I hit him, he went wide, and I was like, Ollie, come back, come back, get on the track because I need you in front of me so that I can pass you. This pass has to be legal. But for me in the car now, there's so much energy, there's so much forward momentum that I've got the feeling that this race has turned into gold. You know, I've passed, I've passed Dan, but I don't know where he is. I can't do anything about it, but I'm just going to now look for the next car, see where he is, and I'm going to try and pass him. Oh, this is the moment that ends Dan's championship. And I you know nothing about this. I didn't know that was going to happen. He didn't know that was going to happen. His team didn't know that was going to happen. Have you looked in your mirror and not thought, where's he gone? No, 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 because all, I can, all I can see is cars and lights. Yeah. So I, I can't see that, that, 
that there's a black car missing. I have no idea. It was only halfway around that last lap that my engineer came on the radio and said, you're back in the lead of the championship. I crossed the line and still I wasn't sure. I, I think I saw about 25 BMW people hanging over the pit wall. I think it did. But were they there for me or were they there for Andy, my teammate? Had I won or had he won? And all these things I don't know. My engineer come on the radio and I could hear loads of celebration in the background. But again, is that for me or is that for Andrew? So I'm waiting on something and it's killing me, it's killing me. And Dan said, he tried to say my name, but his voice broke when he, was, when he said Colin. That's when, that's when I knew and poof, emotions like I have never felt and, and I'll never feel emotions like that again. I, I know I won't because I'd, I'd come from the darkest, deepest place. I couldn't let the emotion out. I, cu I couldn't let it out. I couldn't scream hard enough. I, I, there was nothing to hit hard enough. I hit the steering wheel, but it, it was enough. You know, when you really want to hit a punch bag and let all your aggression out, there was nothing there. I tried for the roof, but my, my belts were on so tight, I couldn't hit the roof. And I just started screaming. I started screaming and yes. I couldn't scream loud enough. And just off the Richter scale, completely off the Richter scale. And I was like a kid, I was trying to jump out of my seat. I was, I was just hitting everything. I was screaming, I was shouting, I was crying. It's the ultimate high that only this can give you. And winning races are good. You know, the three championships that I won before were good, but this is next level stuff. This is, this is a drug. This is a drug that I can't get anywhere else. This, it's not available. <laughs> it's not on prescription. It's not on the black market. This is the drug of BTCC. This is the drug of winning. I've never in my life seen Colin Turkington, after four goes at winning it, do some of the things as an older man <laughs> that you did when you got out this car. I, I just couldn't wait to see people. I couldn't wait to see Louise. I couldn't, Louis there, my number one mechanic. You know, you're thinking about family. I'm just so happy, so happy. Dick's gonna kill me, but I'm getting on the roof. I've never been on the roof of a car in my life, but I had just so much emotion. You know, I th I'd prayed before that race that somebody would give me something else. So I would get strength to do it. And now it's the realization that I've won it, that, that something really special happened there. You know, it, whatever I did, I, I just turned to gold. I could this is amazing. I could see my kids. I could hear this air horn going off in the background. I was so happy with everything. I, I give, I've never kissed Louise Goodman before in my life. I wouldn't be brave enough to, to kiss any other woman but my mother and my wife. And I don't know what came over me. I was just so happy. I was like, okay, interview done. There you go. I'll see you later. <laughs> and a kiss from a four times champion. Even if I don't win another championship again, you know, that will always be a special, special moment in my life. But it will be etched, I think, in the memory of every single British touring car fan, like the 2009 one, but hopefully you can get another championship. But listen, thank you for coming along. Exactly. No problem. Top, I really enjoyed it. Cheers. <laughs>